everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, normally when I do videos, I usually throw a lot of comedy in there and a lot of jokes and stuff, you know, just to kind of put a good mood with them. And they're usually about crazy stories or sometimes I do my savings challenge stuff. This video is going to be a little bit different because it's primarily about me and I don't normally open up about myself on social media or on YouTube because I keep my private life very, very private. But I'm getting married in a couple of months and I feel like my story is one that I should share. Um, it was a long journey for me, you know, to find love and get married, but it was a beautiful journey that I feel like can help someone. You know, we all talk about mental health and how it's important, but mental health has been a challenge for so many people for so many years before it became a big deal over the internet or social media. I was very fortunate in a lot of ways. And I want to share that because I think it gives people hope and it gives people um, something they can relate to. So here we go. It's going to be a three part video. So bear with me. Um, first, I want to start off with my relationship with my mom. Me and my mom are, are not only very close, but we're very good friends as well. Um, we get along pretty good. And like any relationship, you have your ups and downs. But me and my mom are very, very cool. As a parent, I think parents can see in us what we don't always see. They can also see in us our capabilities and when we're hurting and when things aren't going well. And they never feel like they're too old or we're too old to to not lean on them. You know what I'm saying? For support. Um, six years ago, I was in a totally different place than what I am now. You see me smiling now and dancing and being happy. That wasn't me six years ago. Anybody who knows me know that I went through a very big deal in life and I, was, I went through a lot um, at that time. And so going through that, my my vision for my life was, OK, I'm going to travel. You know, I'm just going to travel the world and um, just, you know, get a house on a beach or get a condo in, in a big city in Europe or whatever and just like live like that. The last thing that was on my mind was ever meeting someone. The last thing that was on my mind was getting in a relationship. The last thing that was on my mind was fixing or mending broken relationships that were there. And if you know me personally, you knew back then I wrote two very important pieces that probably pissed people off. One was called Pieces of a Man and one was called 365. And I remember posting these writing pieces that were like 40 pages long each on Facebook at the time. And I threw everybody under the bus because I was so upset with the fact that I allowed myself to get played by so many people. And I remember just throwing it out there. I, it was so much in me that I kept hidden for years and I just was angry. And I was like, you know, what? it's enough. I'm going to put everybody on notice that I, that, that I feel this way. During that process, you know, you don't trust a lot of people. You don't feel close to a lot of people. You're angry because of what people have done to you. And those years, especially early in those years, are the healing years, I would like to say. Um, in that healing and, and, and leaning on God for guidance and praying hard and relying on my faith um, during the beginning of that process, it, again, it was about traveling. It wasn't about really getting to know people. It wasn't about mending fences. It was about, you know what, I'm going to get out and I'm going to see the world because I've never done that. Um, that's how that first trip to England came about. It was like a couple years before that it was planned. It was like, OK, I'm going to get my passport. I'm just going to go. Um Eventually, I would say about two years into that, where I would say from 2016 to 2018, um, I was in a very dark place in, 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 in that first year. Um, and I think, you know, I was very fortunate to not suffer from mental health. I mean, it, it was it was something that I went through that a lot of people go through in life. And I was very fortunate to not suffer from that. Um, you know, I didn't have people around me. I didn't have people, supportive people saying, Dante, are you okay? Or supportive people saying, Dante, do you need anything? I didn't have that. The people that I thought would be in my corner or circle were not, uh, were not even checking on me at that time. And I wasn't really pissed off about it. I blame myself for trusting people like that. You know what I mean? So I think that I looked at myself as somebody who was always there for his friends, always there for people. And when I needed people most at that time, nobody was there. And I never really expressed how I felt about that. But to be honest, it felt like I was in a room screaming where nobody could hear me. Nobody could hear what I was saying. 
and I felt like I was in this room by myself with like these glass windows. And it was it was a tough situation to deal with. But I also learned that I came from a very strong family. I, I learned that I came from a family with a very thick skin, that I could take a lot, that I could take a lot without reacting in a negative way and really focus on what I could control, which was rebuilding my life. And that was very important to me. Um, during this process, I remember having talks with my mom. Again, we, we, we're very good friends as well as mother and son. And I remember the conversation came about of, well, what did I want to do? Then I remember saying, I just want to travel. I don't want nothing to do with any women, girls, nothing. I just want to travel. And my mom was like, that's not the answer. And I said, mom, I'm, I'm 40 something years old. I said, I'm rebuilding my life. I said, I don't want to deal with anything like that. And as angry as I was, I had to look inside to say, okay, how did you allow, whether it was family members or friends or just people in general, I had to blame myself for allowing those type of people in my life. I had to blame myself for that because I was like, you know, I wasn't raised that way. And to allow people in my life like that was not a good move on my part. But when you're not putting God first and you're not thinking about what you're doing before you're doing it, you allow the wrong people in. Even if you think they have genuine tendencies or good hearts, sometimes people out here don't have that. And as much as I could say this person did me wrong or that person did me wrong or this person mistreated me and as much as I, that weighed on me, I had to look and say, look, I allowed these people in my life. I, I did that. I allowed these people to get close to me. It was my fault for allowing that. And once I learned it, that was the role that I played. I owned it. No, that doesn't mean that when you allow somebody in your life that that gives them the right to treat you any kind of way or people that have known you your whole life, friends that have known you, that doesn't give them the right. But you do at some point have to learn who to keep around you and who to cut off. And that took me almost, you know, almost 40 years to get right, you know, as far as people I chose to hang around and people I didn't. That was a big part of this story. Um, so once I grasped that and owned that, I put myself in the direction of, OK, I still want to travel, but I was always open to whatever God's plan was at the time for me. Um, it was a time I was going to move to Vermont. It was a time I was going to do all these different things. And my mom kind of wanted me to stay put because in her mind, she had two two important you know theories on this. Number one, she knew I was going to get married. It was it was strange because at that time I was like, I'm not getting married. I'm not mm -mm, not me Two. She knew that I was going to have a big family. And I was like, Mom, you know, I'm 40 something years old. I, you know, the, the thought of me having children at 40 and 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 being able to do this, I just didn't see it. You know, back then I was like, you know, I knew people did it. I knew people did it even 20 years ago. I, I worked alongside people that, that met their wives in their 40s and had beautiful children. And I, I, I've, I've seen this, but I just didn't think it would happen to me. Um, I had a lot of doubts. And it wasn't that I was doubting God's work. I just, even though I, I've always been a confident person, I don't think I saw in me what my mother saw in me. You know what I mean? I felt like I had just been this sucker. You know what I mean? For a lot of people. You know, that's why I'm not saying it wasn't just, okay, you're a sucker for one person. I felt like I had been a sucker for a lot of people throughout my life. And I just was like, I blamed myself for it. I remember just coming so hard on myself, down so hard on myself because I allowed these jerks in my life and they would just take a piece by piece by piece by piece from me like a bully, like I would have nothing left. And I, I, I felt so stupid because I didn't like the person I was back then. I didn't like it, you know. And so I learned very quickly that I had to not only stand up for myself, but I had to stand up to the people that were doing it. And it, it, it was hard because some of these people I've known my whole life, some people I, I knew for a short time, some people I knew for years, some people just weren't healthy. And one of the hardest things about this story that I dealt with was that at that time, there were people trying to come into my life that I knew many, many years before. We're talking probably 15, 16 years prior. And they felt like they had a right to come into my life to, I guess, pick me apart or see that I was vulnerable or whatever they felt like they could do at the time. And I, I was really blindsided by that. And I was very upset because I was like, look, I'm not dating you or I'm not dealing with you or I'm not dealing with this. Like I said, I was in a very bad place for the first uh, year and a half or so. 
And even as I started to get into a very good place, I knew that that wasn't what I wanted. So then my mom says something to me to really hit home. She says, you know, Dante, you are going to meet someone that deserves you. And what I mean by that is when you're a nice person, sometimes you get the short end of the stick with friends, with family, with different relationships or whatever you want to call it. Being a person that understands that you deserve better, that's where this is going to help you. God is going to provide you with someone that you would not believe. And I just, I, I'm not going to say I doubted God. Like I said, I had doubts at that time. And then my mom had this dream one night that kind of changed everything. And I'm going to get to that dream next. Stay tuned.